Welcome to Wellness Waves, everyone. Today, we're diving into a topic that sounds almost unbelievable, something that might completely flip your understanding of healthy eating. We're talking about molasses. Yes, that sweet, sticky byproduct of sugar and its shocking ability to impact insulin resistance. It's not the same as sugar, but the dose matters significantly, and we'll talk about exactly how much to use and when not to use it. Whoa, Dr. Mark, molasses stopping insulin resistance? That feels completely backwards from everything we're told about sugar and insulin. My first thought is, isn't it just another form of sugar? That's the paradox, Leo. Imagine being able to have a higher carbohydrate meal and by using molasses, changing the entire way your body produces insulin. It's super wild and the science is cutting edge. Even though it's a byproduct of sugar, you're actually leaving all the minerals and nutrition in the molasses. And the darker the molasses, the more beneficial it is. Okay, this sounds like a secret weapon for anyone struggling with blood sugar. What exactly are we going to learn? I'm going to give you the playbook. We'll cover when to use it, mainly for insulin dynamics and how to impact insulin resistance, when to use it for its antioxidant abilities, and when to use it for a carb blocker effect. The bottom line is, it's better than refined sugar. So what does the science actually say about this? There's a fascinating study published in the European Journal of Nutrition they gave subjects five test meals. One was a control, and the others had varying dosages of molasses along with a higher carbohydrate meal. At first, they thought, okay, it didn't really change the blood glucose much. But then what they found is that the more molasses that was added, the less insulin that was required. Wait, you have to repeat that, Dr. Mark. The more sugar molasses, the less insulin needed? That's completely counterintuitive. I know, right? It is completely backwards from what we would think. Remember, with improving insulin resistance, sure, we want to improve glucose control, but we really want to get rid of chronically high circulating insulin. So why is molasses making it so you need less insulin? This sounds like a miracle. It really does. What's the mechanism? It seems to impact pancreatic beta cells by actually helping dysfunctional beta cells produce insulin again. So essentially, the pancreas was operating at its full potential. This makes sense because when you dive deeper into this study, we learn something else you can apply. The more insulin resistant or metabolically damaged someone was, the more that the molasses helped. So it's almost like a superhero aid for the pancreas. This is really challenging the idea that all sugar is bad. Exactly. You don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Not all sugars are created equal. It's not necessarily about the sugar. It's more about the inflammatory response that occurs from garbage sugars. The American Clinical Nutrition published something else. They found that molasses also slowed the uptake of glucose and fructose by intestinal cells. So there's also a slowing of basically taking up these sugars that might be hard to deal with. So it's not just helping the pancreas, it's slowing absorption. Fascinating. It's kind of funny because when things are left in their whole food form or in a concentrated whole food form like molasses, the more powerful they are. Now, let's talk about how much to use for this effect and what kind of molasses. It seems as though when you're choosing a molasses for this particular case, you want to go with the darker molasses. So blackstrap molasses is going to have more potency when it comes to this. Light molasses is still good, but it has fewer nutrients and minerals. And the dose? This is key to not just making it another sugar. There's a tipping point. It seems as though like a half a tablespoon to a tablespoon is where you want to be for this effect. If you're potentially insulin resistant, then you want to pay attention to this. But there are other benefits to molasses, like a gastric emptying effect, and even a potential fat loss or weight loss effect, and the dose is a little bit different for that. So, other studies? Let's look at another study that focused on glucose control. This study found that adding molasses to a higher starch meal, specifically to a higher starch meal, reduced the glucose spike, the GI, by 5 to 20 percent. Once again, in a dose-dependent fashion, the more that was added, the more the effect. But if you start going overboard, like over three tablespoons, then you start getting more of the actual sugar from the molasses, superseding everything else. Ah, so there is a limit. Too much is still too much sugar. 
exactly. The dose really does make the poison here. But let's talk about why this works, because it works upon an axis known as GIP, which is a gut incretin, and it does something really specific. This is going to tailor how you use it, so it's important to hear and understand this. GIP and incretins sounds complex, but I'm ready. The Journal of Food looked into this and found that molasses increases what's called amylin. Amylin is released by a pancreatic beta cell directly alongside insulin. Its job is to essentially make it so that glucose absorbs a little slower. It slows gastric emptying, so it makes it so that insulin can do its job easier. Then you have GIP, which is released by the small intestine to essentially allow insulin to be released in a glucose-dependent fashion. So all these things communicate, and molasses helps that communication. What we're finding is that molasses helps insulin do its job better by helping other things communicate with it. So it truly is like a control center in a way for helping us use insulin. We're breaking down the amazing science behind molasses. Now let's talk about timing. You wouldn't really want to do this with dinner. Why not with dinner? I'd think slowing gastric emptying before bed would be good. What's going to happen then is you're going to kind of delay the potential second glucose spike. When you have carbohydrates, you have a spike, and then you can have another spike afterward. You want to make sure that you're not having a big second spike after you're asleep. So using molasses to delay gastric emptying for potential fat loss or insulin resistance improvements, you really want to be doing it with lunch. Lunch makes sense. So with a sandwich or something starchy? Exactly. You can delay the gastric emptying of it. And again, you want to keep that dose around like one tablespoon or so. Remember, you're not trying to sweeten it with it. You're using it as a little bit of a tool. We've seen similar stuff with allulose before, which is technically a rare sugar, but it has these metabolic effects. It seems like molasses might be in a similar ballpark. So now we've learned about using it to help with insulin and when to use it for optimal weight loss. What about the fact that it's a very powerful antioxidant? Antioxidants are always good, but how does molasses compare to other sweeteners? The Journal of the Academy of Dinatonogy compared molasses to sugar, corn syrup, and 11 other sweeteners. They were looking at total antioxidant score, but also something called the ferric reducing ability of plasma. Ferric reducing ability. That's a mouthful. What does that mean for us? It means that when we have iron, iron gets turned into a storage form or a usable form. When iron is in its ferrous state, or when it's in a reduced capacity, it's more usable. But also, we have to remember that too much iron oxidizes things. What happens if you leave a dumbbell or metal out in the elements? It oxidizes and rusts. That's exactly what happens with oxidative stress in our bodies. So we want to reduce that total iron amount to prevent oxidative stress. Yes. So the reason they measure this is because they want to see, okay, what is something's effect on the ferric reducing ability of plasma? And what they found is that molasses, blackstrap molasses, had the highest antioxidant score when it came to that ferric reducing ability. So it's a powerful long-term anti-inflammatory and antioxidant tool. Exactly. If you're looking at it from an inflammatory perspective, it's more of a longer-term thing. How do you long-term take this stuff in? And it doesn't really matter whether you're taking it with carbs or not, for that matter. It's just about getting the antioxidant effect. And for buying it, what kind of molasses should we look for? The type of molasses you get is really important. Once again, I recommend you get either a dark or a blackstrap molasses. It's important to trust your source, as some sweeteners can be stripped of nutrients. Now, there's another interesting thing that molasses does. It blocks the enzymes that break down sugar and starches. It blocks, to a certain degree, alpha amylase and alpha glucosidis. So it's literally a carb blocker. That sounds like a dream. These are the enzymes that break down carbs in our intestines. When those enzymes are not present or are in lesser amounts, it takes us longer to break down a starch molecule. This means that some of the starch molecule might even make it all the way through and just get into our colon and ultimately be broken down by the microbiome, not even absorbing into our bloodstream. So less sugar absorbed and slower absorption for what does get through. Exactly, which again helps from an insulin perspective because you need less insulin since you're not getting a big flood of it. If you're insulin resistant, you want this to drip out a little bit slower. 
Bottom line, less sugar is absorbed in the intestines when molasses is added into the mix, so it's a literal, natural carb blocker. It's not just delaying gastric emptying, it's actually blocking the absorption of carbohydrates to a degree, even though it's a sugar. This totally refutes the all calories are equal argument. It does. This is to be able to share with the people that say all sugars are created equal, every single calorie is the same as long as it's a calorie. There was a study published in Food Chemistry in 2011 that found that the antioxidants in blackstrap molasses had anti-mutagenic properties, meaning it was affecting our DNA to the point where the DNA wouldn't mutate. There's a legit longevity benefit to this. That's incredible a longevity benefit from molasses something amazing happens when you actually get food in its whole food form in the whole food matrix this is like a concentrated nutritional element that is extracted when you have refined sugar it explains exactly why refined sugar is different from actual real sugar that came from the earth the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry published a study that molasses actually protected the liver DNA so it's acting as a shield for liver DNA? Yes. We're having huge antioxidant effects here. Not to mention, it blocked something called the Fenton reaction. The Fenton reaction is a major catalyst when it comes down to oxidative stress. This reaction is responsible for a large amount of the oxidative stress in our body. So we're finding that molasses has the ability to block that reaction. It's very important to know when to use it and when not to use it. You want to use it with lunch, with a high starch meal, not with a high sugar meal. If you use it with sugar, you're not going to get the same effect. So it's about aiding starches, not just adding more sugar. Exactly. The molasses is designed to aid in the starches. It's going to help slow the digestion of the starches, but it's not going to help you when you're adding it on top of regular sugar. That's just going to increase the glucose load and stress you more as far as insulin is concerned. So you want to use it with starchy meals. Maybe you're having pasta or a sandwich or something that's lower, slower digesting. That's the best time to use it. And avoid dinner, as you mentioned. What about breakfast? I would avoid using it with dinner. If you did want to use it with breakfast, you'd want to add it to something that's already low glycemic. So if that was the case, maybe you'd want to add it to some oatmeal or something like that. Or adding it with a little bit of yogurt and some fruit might not be a bad idea. Dr. Mark, this has been truly eye-opening. Who knew molasses, a humble byproduct, held such incredible metabolic power? It's amazing what nature provides, Leo, when we look beyond the processed and refined. Molasses is a testament to the power of whole food nutrition. It offers a unique toolkit for those looking to manage insulin resistance, reduce oxidative stress, and even support longevity, all from a surprisingly accessible source. Absolutely. It's not just about what you cut out, but what powerful additions you can make. And it truly makes you question everything you thought you knew about sugar. Indeed. And for those interested in exploring other natural sweeteners and their unique benefits, I've created other videos talking about things like maple syrup and honey. I've put those videos in the description if you want to check them out because that breaks down how to use maple syrup and honey instead of refined sugar and when you wish to do that. So, there you have it, folks. Molasses, a true game changer for insulin resistance and beyond. This isn't just a sweet treat, it's a metabolic tool. That's right, Leo. As always, empower yourself with knowledge and make informed choices for your wellness journey. If you found this discussion as fascinating as I did, please hit that like button, subscribe to Wellness Waves for more truth-telling health content, and leave a comment below telling us your biggest takeaway from today's episode. We love hearing from you. Until next time, stay well.